So let's look back here. A Las Vegas pharmacist testified that he sold Dr. Conrad Murray four gallons of propofol over a three-month period. Dr. Murray made his last order just 10 days before Michael Jackson died. I want to bring in Dr. Paul Wishmeyer now. He's a professor of anesthesiology at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, and he did a major study of propofol abuse a few years ago. So Dr. Wishmeyer, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today. Absolutely glad I can help. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, as I understand it, you have, uh, first of all, I have to apologize to you that you had a friend that died of this. So I'm so sorry that you went through that first and foremost. But do I understand that because of that friend's death, that was the impetus for the study? It was. Um, a, a classmate of mine when I was a training anesthesia resident was found um, dead of, of propofol at home actually and this was quite a shock to the rest of us because this was not a medication we realized was a drug that could be abused much less lead to the death of one of our colleagues and as I began to talk to other anesthesia training programs I began to hear more and more often over the last five to seven years that this was a drug that was being commonly abused and was leading to deaths amongst our trainees and our, our other physicians in our specialty. So who is addicted to it and how wise, widespread is it? Well, and, and to actually say they're addicted to it, I suppose, is a misnomer. Um, it's a drug people use to escape um, anxiety and trauma. Um, in speaking with the centers that treat physicians and other professionals um, in our specialty and, and, and in medicine who use this drug, people use this to escape past trauma, the typical abuser would be someone who had sexual, physical, or other sorts of trauma in their childhood or in their growing up. And this drug takes all that pain in their head away. And so the typical individual would be someone who had this past, but also potentially was a risk taker or potentially um, was someone who just really wanted to escape. And it, it was much more common than we expected. We realized there'd been a five-fold increase in the abuse of this drug over the last 10 years. Um, and the scary part is is 30% of physicians that ever touch this drug will die from this drug, even knowing how to use it. Oh, my goodness. Now, when you say people were abusing it, who are these people? Are they people in the medical profession? They are. It, the, 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 the typical abusing individual is an anesthesiologist who has access to the drug, mm -hmm. although we've been really struck by how easy it is to get this drug. I, I did some work with another um, media outlet um, right after Michael Jackson's death. And the producer of that um, particular show is able to order this drug to her desk from overseas as a regular citizen, as a regular individual. There's reports in our medical literature of people getting this drug on eBay. Um, it's pretty easy to get, but the typical person that we see abuse it is someone who works in an operating room or has access to operating room drugs. The real issue that led me to do this study, honestly, was that this drug sits out in hospitals and operating rooms all around the United States with very little control. We'd like to believe that's changing, but we don't know that it is. The, the FDA and the DEA do not regulate this drug at this moment at all. It's easier to get than penicillin.